It was a tragedy because it didn't have to happen. Every day you have choices to make, and those choices can determine success or failure, happiness or sadness, and in some cases such as this, life and death. Students, it is our responsibility as adults to inform and educate you on the importance of making the right choices. Information is a powerful thing because in that moment of choice, when you get to decide whether you will go down that path or not, you need to know the potential consequence of your action. Listen today to these speakers. Listen to what they have to say so that you can make the right choice. Our first speaker this morning is Sergeant Courtney Perro. He is a 19-year veteran of the Plano Police Department. He is presently assigned to the Criminal Investigative Services Division where he supervises the day-to-day -day operations of the Narcotics Unit, which is composed of undercover and non-undercover investigators. Sergeant Perro holds a Master Peace Officer license and an instructor certificate from the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement. He is a graduate of the School of Police Supervision at the Institute of, for Law Enforcement Administration and is an instructor in the International Association of Chiefs of Police, Leadership in Police Organizations Program. Welcome, Sergeant Perro. Good morning. You, uh, I appreciate you guys uh, having me here. As you can see from, the, from my slide here, I am actually uh, substituting for Special Agent Vic Ruth, who is uh, with DEA. He had a court appearance he had to make today. But Vic and I do a ton of these trainings together. And the message is the same regardless. He's just a little taller than me and we'll have a you actually get to see him over the podium a little better than you can see me. But other than that, the message is going to be exactly the same. Um, we have not a lot of time to talk about a big, big problem. And what I've been asked to do today is kind of talk a little bit about some of the, the trends that we're seeing in and around this area and also talk about some of the trends that um, we're seeing really coming uh, quickly. Or they, haven't, they haven't been around very long. There are drugs out here that I didn't even, I had not heard about if I would have stood on this podium this day last year, I'd never heard of them. And there's several like that that you guys need to be aware of. And uh, we're going to talk about the dangers of them. So um, let me see if I can do this right without messing this thing up. First thing I want to talk about, well, maybe, hold on, is not that. Love this thing. Okay. Marijuana. We're not going to spend very much time on this at all, but I want you to know that marijuana today is much more dangerous than it was um, even five, ten years ago. What I also want you to know is that I'm going to have to go down to... Thank you. Um, you've heard about this thing be called a gateway drug. You've heard about marijuana be a being called a gateway drug. What that means is people that start using marijuana are much, much, much more likely to start using something else. Um, they are much more likely to start using some other drug later in life. People that, start, that use heroin or cocaine or methamphetamine or some of these other drugs usually did not start their drug use lifestyle or lifetime using that drug. So it's something to be very concerned about. The other thing is that youth 8 to 12 to 17 years old, which comprises the, the demographic most of you are in right now, um, who use marijuana are 85 times more likely to use cocaine. And 60% of the kids who smoke pot before the age of 15 move on to use cocaine. And that's just talking about the cocaine thing. There's stats, there are stats about that with heroin and methamphetamine and everything else. As a sergeant of the narcotics unit in the largest town in Collin County, I can tell you this is a big, big problem. We have plenty and plenty of... Uh, I guess if you could say overdoses over our history to show you that this is exactly how this happened. So do not underestimate the importance of, uh, of marijuana. Marijuana direct despite what you might hear in the mainstream media, okay, and despite what you might hear 
from things that come out of Colorado and Washington State and California and other places around the country. Do your own research. Don't, don't listen to the things. Get online and do the medical research about this stuff. I'm not, you don't have to listen to me either, but get in there and actually look this stuff up and look at the people, the medical people that have actually done the research on this stuff. It affects memory, learning, attention, and reaction time. It has got a significant problem, or it has a significant impact on social behavior, decision making. That's a key one. Decision making under the influence of marijuana is largely skewed. Um, there are two different kinds of marijuana. Marijuana that's grown outside and marijuana that's grown inside. And the THC content of marijuana that's grown inside right now is significantly higher than it ever was, ever before today, actually. It just continues to go up. So the potency of this stuff has gotten much higher. They're producing this stuff in mass quantities, and it's almost become a scientific experiment to see who can get the best stuff out there that does not make it better for you. This actually makes the problem that we're talking about even worse. The higher that gets, the higher, the worse it goes. Um, so <clears throat> here's some other stuff. Maybe you've heard of some of this thing, these things. I want, you to, I want you to have the facts about it, though. We had an incident about this yesterday in Plano, at a, at a high school in Plano, actually. Um, THC extraction is something that's coming largely from the West Coast. A lot of this stuff is coming from, or the influence of this is coming from the places that have legalized marijuana. This is a process where they extract THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, from the marijuana plant and turn it into a type of resin or type of wax. And it's got a super concentrated form of THC in it. Um, this makes it even more dangerous than the marijuana we were talking about a minute ago. Um, it's a concentrated form of this stuff. It actually looks like, uh, you can go to the next one too. It goes, looks like earwax. It really actually looks like the stuff that you get on your Q-tip. It's disgusting. Um, you guys might have heard about it. It's also called wax, dabs. Uh, others, I could go down, there's a list of 10 or 20 different names this stuff is being called around the country and around Collin County. Um, people are using it very similar to the way that you use marijuana in a bong, but the the bong setup is a little bit different. I'm not going to go into the particulars with you. But if you hear, the reason I bring this up is not to, not to let you know, not to, um, I want you guys to understand that if people ask you about this stuff, or just because something has a different name, a name that you haven't heard before, and this stuff is not being called weed or marijuana, doesn't mean that it's something that's okay to use or okay to try out. Because there's a lot of things, and we'll talk about some more of them later on, that are being called different things, and there's people that are being offered them that have just absolutely no idea what, they're, what the content of this stuff actually is. You can go to the next one, too. Um, this is kind of some more pictures of it. It's, it's got a varied appearance. Sometimes it's got that yellow, orange-looking color to it. The stuff I saw yesterday had a, a, like a, for lack of a better term, a puke green-looking color. It was actually pretty disgusting. But it's all the same stuff when, it come, when it's processed in the same manner. Um, We've got some, it sometimes comes in liquid form when they haven't made it too waxy yet. Sometimes they add it to electronic cigarettes. Sometimes you can, uh, this is essentially hash oil. Another thing that might interest people, this is something people do not know, is that you cannot possess in any quantity of this stuff without it being a felony in the state of Texas. This is a penalty group two controlled substance. Just because it started with marijuana, the fact that it goes through this synthesis process makes it a felony to possess it anywhere, and you possess it obviously in a drug-free zone or somewhere else, it makes it even worse. So uh, even in an e-cigarette in little quantities, there, is, uh, there are e-cigarettes that are being filled with THC, especially for moms and dads, um, and, and you guys too. Some of your friends that might be using some of these things, uh, you just don't know what exactly it is that your friend, or their, maybe it's not a friend, maybe a person that you meet somewhere has got in their, in their device. Um, you can do that. It's the same, pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm going to talk about synthetics a little bit. Mr. Brown is going to talk about them as well. We have very differing perspectives on them as far as, you know, he's got the perspective from the parent. I have the perspective from law enforcement. I'm also a parent. But we also, we focus on it exactly the same way. So some of the things I'm going to say is going to set the stage for some of the information he's going to share with you, which is very, very, very worthwhile to listen to. Synthetic cannabinoids. This is K2. This is spice. This is the stuff that everybody knows as synthetic marijuana. I want to tell you, this is not synthetic marijuana. It's called synthetic marijuana, but there is absolutely nothing about it that is really even that similar to marijuana. It was just a marketing tool, and it's very successful because even today, this is still what people are calling it. Um, this stuff is produced mostly in China, the chemical, 
and then the chemical is turned into a liquid by mixing either alcohol or acetone or some other type of solvent with the powdered chemical and sprayed onto otherwise relatively harmless plant material. Um, and it's not marijuana. Marijuana, the, the THC, the, the chemical is in the plant itself. The plant is actually against the law. This stuff, they have a plant that's not against the law that they dry out and they spray some type of research chemical that comes from some disgusting, filthy laboratory, mostly in China, and we've seen pictures of plenty of them, and then they spray that on this stuff. Um, I was talking to an investigator in Las Vegas, Nevada on Tuesday, and they have a group, a task force, that does absolutely nothing except investigate the producers of synthetic cannabinoids, cathinones, which is your bath salts, stuff like that, and hallucinogens, which is things like NBOM and LSD and other things. Um, he says that they actually have gone into laboratories and they've got this stuff. Imagine you mow your grass and you've got bags and bags of your dried out grass. They would spray, they'd pour that stuff onto this warehouse floor and they literally just take hoses and squirters and squirt this chemical stuff onto it and use shovels to shovel it up and mix it up. Sometimes they use the same cement mixers you see at, uh, at uh, construction sites. There's no scientific process here. They're just mass producing this stuff. And the way that they produce it, you absolutely have no idea what you're getting. And Mr. Brown will talk about that as well. Um, you're going to see this stuff called not, labeled not for human consumption. The interesting thing about that is that's the only part of this thing that we're going to talk about that's actually true. And that part is you should not consume this stuff for a variety of reasons. We could spend an entire two days talking about the dangers associated with synthetic drugs. And we're going to talk about the highlights of it this morning. But essentially what I'm going to tell you is this stuff can kill you. Um, the things that we're talking about can kill you. I don't care if they're against the law or they're new or they're, they're supposed to be safe or they're a safer alternative to marijuana, supposedly. Um, please don't believe that stuff. The Food and Drug Administration is the, one, is the people they're trying to avoid when they put that on their product. Think about it for a second. Regardless of what your opinion might be about this stuff, and regardless what some people you know, what their overall experiences with some of this stuff might or might not be, is there any other product that you can think of that you can go to a store and purchase and consume to put in your body, whether that be milk, bread, soda, even alcohol, not that you guys drink that, but any person that goes out and, and, and buys any type of consumable product, is there any other product that's okay to consume that they have a label on there that says not for human consumption? No. Things like rat poison and things that are going to actually kill you say, don't eat this, don't drink this because it's going to harm you. Ironically, they put that on there not to warn people, in this particular case, they put it on there because they don't want the Food and Drug Administration having an ability to have oversight and regulatory control over this product. Um, it's, it's, a, it's kind of ironic that's why it's on there, but that's exactly what it is. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about this because I know Mr. Brown's going to talk about it, but the chemicals in this stuff are, there are thousands now of different chemicals that are being identified by laboratories across the country every single day and there are a lot of these chemicals are being mixed with other chemicals and changed a little bit to mimic another one that people liked a lot there's absolutely no way to know what actually is in the, the drugs that you actually are going to be able to purchase in some of these stores um, I'm not going to cover that part so this stuff is packaged in a lot of different ways some of these packages are relatively old but let me tell you I told you the story about how they make this stuff if you could see some of the pictures in some of these laboratories and see the disgusting manner in which these things are produced, you'd understand what I'm talking about. But they will take the exact same batch of finished product, if you will, and then just divide it up into five or ten different types of bags. In other words, just because one of them might be called Diablo, the crazy monkey or the knockout or the haze, the purple haze, may all be exactly the same stuff. They just put it in a different package because different people, it's all about marketing. So just because one person takes a certain type and is okay, or let's say a certain per a person takes one and overdoses on it. Well, oh, I'm not going to take the Diablo then because that affected my friend. I'm going to take the other stuff because that stuff must be better. I'm here to tell you, it's probably coming out of the same bucket. Um, so that's something you need to be concerned and be aware of as well. Here's just some more photos of it. Um, this particular girl is from Houston, Texas. Uh, Emily just about died.
from this stuff. Her parents actually came to her bedside and they were actually praying with her and actually talking about funeral plans when she somehow miraculously came out of this. They thought that she was going to be, uh, at very best, they thought she was going to have significant brain damage. And all she did, all she did, she said later, was smoke a little K2 with her friends. And it affected her in a very, very significant way. <clears throat> this one, synthetic marijuana. Can't make this stuff up, guys. Down in Waco, Texas, we have a 20-something-year-old man who's inside his house using synthetic marijuana. If, remember, it's not synthetic marijuana. That's just what people call it, so that's what we're gonna, how we're going to define it. He walk, he's smoking it, minding his own business, watching TV, playing Xbox, whatever he's doing. At some point, he stands up, walks out in his front yard, sees his elderly neighbor, 80-something-year-old neighbor next, in the yard next to him, watering her plants or her, her flowers. Walks over to her, hits her, knocks her out, grabs the dog off her lap, and starts eating the skin off the back of the dog's back. And I don't tell you these stories to make you, you know, make your stomach turn or something. I'm telling you these stories because if you have a drug, you have a chemical, you have a substance that's going to make you do something like that that you wouldn't otherwise do, I don't care what your perspective is, you can't tell me that that stuff is safe for you if it's going to make you do something like that. And all of these drugs have stories like that. Me and Mr. Brown and I, Mr. Brown and I could spend hours and hours talking about similar type stories, but I just wanted to show you a couple of them. Um, synthetic cathinones. This is the stuff that we know as bath salts. This is the thing, the, the molly. You've heard it called molly. There's a bunch of different terms for it out there. This stuff is very, very similar to synthetic marijuana, K2, or spice, in that it comes from, it's a research chemical that has been produced mostly overseas, mostly in China and Asia, and shipped to the United States. The biggest difference is, other than the, the chemical properties, it's more of a stimulant, uh, and it's got some hallucinogenic properties than the, than the cannabinoids, the manufacturing process is very much the same. They just don't dilute this down and turn it into a liquid and spray it on plant material. This is stuff that they're selling as bath salts or some other type, plant food or some other type of, um, you know, disguise, if you will. But all they're doing is intending for people to use this stuff by, uh, usually by snorting it. It doesn't have, it also has the not for human consumption. It has things on there telling you, you really shouldn't use this stuff. But we all know that the way, the reason they're putting these things out there in the store and on the internet and other places is because they want people to use that despite how dangerous they know that this stuff is. Um, bath salts. This is the first, the first time most people in this country ever heard of a bath salt that's not an actual bath salt. And I'll tell you, and the reason I say that is when I first heard about bath salts, I went, bath salts? I mean, what, what the heck's a bath salt? Right? And I actually thought, I mean, like, had to do something with bathing. And I didn't, haven't, and still won't ever use a bath salt in the sense that something you put in your bath, but I've researched it. I find that now apparently there are actual bath salts, not this stuff, that people choose to bathe with. And I'm not quite certain on what it does for you, but it's apparently purchased and you can use it. That's not what this stuff is, okay? And, but the first time people actually heard about it is when Miami, when a homeless man ate the face off another man while under the influence of this stuff. That's the stuff that he was under the influence of. Again, I go back to, if you have a substance or a chemical that's going to make you do something like that that you wouldn't normally do, that's not good for you. You should not use this kind of stuff. Um, it's also a package in very similar ways. Colorful, attractive packaging that makes, you, makes the, con the consumer uh, attracted to it. But all of it is going to say, you know, uh, not for human consumption. It's going to say uh, legal in all 50 states in many cases, which is not always the case, usually not the case. <clears throat> um, let's just pass this one. See this, this label right here? This is a label from China. EMS is an international shipping company that works largely with the United States Postal Service. We got one of these yesterday, actually. I'm not going to tell you how, but we found this label yesterday coming from China. Um, this stuff is, this is the, the, the packaging that this stuff is coming to our country and you're seeing this stuff. Okay, go ahead. And it's, oh, that's not a very good picture, but it's coming across in powder form and they're putting it in, they're describing it in a manner I told you about. 
Okay, we're going to talk about GHB for a minute. I'm not going to talk about every drug on the marketplace because I'd be here for all, all day. But I'm going to talk about GHB for a couple reasons. One, it's extremely dangerous. But two, we're seeing a lot more of it. Um, this stuff is coming back with the resurgence. And a lot of people, especially your age, don't know what this stuff is because it really hasn't been um, that talked about or that, um, that much discussed that much recently over the last five or ten years, especially the last five years. This is the stuff that people called the date rape drug about five or 10 years ago. I started my, my time in narcotics in 2001 as a detective and I investigated nothing but drug overdoses and drug overdose deaths for the first six years of my career in that unit. GHB was a big, big problem back then. And then for some reason it didn't just go away, but it largely kind of fell off the radar, if you will, for a little while. We weren't arresting a lot of people for it. People weren't manufacturing stuff in their house as much. But over the last year, we've seen a spike in it. So you guys need to know what this stuff actually is, not what people tell you it is. This stuff is gamma butyrolactone. That's the, that's the chemical that's the precursor for GHB, which is gamma hydroxybutrate. Gamma butyrolactone, if you look it up online, what you'll find is it's, a, it's an industrial chemical that is largely used to strip the wax off the floors in the hallway of the school at nighttime, the people, that, the custodians and janitors and cleaning staff will strip all the junk off the floors with this stuff, okay? Take that and they mix like uh, several other chemicals to include red devil lye, sodium hydroxide with it, and then that's it. I mean, there, there's, it's all chemicals. None of those things by themselves are things that you would ever think of trying to put into your body, yet that's the chemicals that are being used to make this stuff. Um, what you need to know about GHB, a couple things. This is water in my bottle. I know that because I brought it from my own house. Um, water in a water bottle, if you shake it, the bubbles in the middle of the water bottle, if you have a water bottle in your hand, first make sure that the lid is on tight and then shake it. You'll see what I'm talking about. I did this once in a presentation and sprayed water all over the stage. It was terrible. But the reason I say that is if someone hands you something and you don't know what that is and you don't know this person, you need to look at it and say, hey, this stuff doesn't look like water. This stuff doesn't look like whatever it is purported to be. GHB, the liquid will suspend in the middle of that, the, the bubbles rather will suspend in the middle of the liquid. It's a little bit thicker than water. It's got the consistency of like Cairo syrup sometimes. Um, and it's people consume this stuff, not just to, uh, well, we go back to that. They will consume this stuff for the same reason people drink alcohol, to achieve a state of intoxication. Um, to achieve a state of intoxication. Where's my, Patty, how much time do I have? Are we going okay? Okay. Um, to, to achieve a state of intoxication. They'll take a cap full of this stuff, a cap of G, and take it and instead of having a beer or a wine or whatever it is they want to have. Now, the dangerous side, especially for you young ladies, not only for the young ladies, but it seems to be more, more targeted towards the young ladies. People will take this stuff and give it unknowingly to ladies, especially those of you that are going off to college soon. They will put this in a drink. If it's got alcohol in it, it intensifies the effects of the drug significantly. And women have woke up in the morning, not, and maybe they'll have one drink, whether it had alcohol in it or not. But they wake up and they don't remember last night. They can tell that maybe things have happened to them that they weren't, um, they hadn't planned to do. They'd been violated in some way and they have absolutely nothing to be able to tie that back to. This stuff is increasing popularity and you need to be very, very careful about it. So that's all I'm gonna say about GHB, except for the fact that it's coming up here. Synthetic hallucinogens. This is something we've okay. This is something we've heard a lot about over the last um, four to six to twelve months. You guys, unfortunately, know a lot more about this than a lot of people do. I encourage you to spread the dangers to your friends that don't go to the school, that don't have the opportunity to listen to talk to, to Mr. Brown this morning, and certainly haven't experienced a tragedy that your school has experienced. You have to let people know this stuff is not safe. Um, Synthetic hallucinogens like Enbalm will kill you. Uh, there are a lot of drugs out there that people take that have a much lower uh, mortality rate or a death rate than this stuff does. This is extremely, extremely dangerous stuff. I'm not going to go into the specifics, but I can tell you that this is stuff is being purported to be LSD. Our undercover officer is being offered LSD. The drug dealer, I guess, really does think it's LSD. Um, and we're sending it to our laboratory and it's coming back and it's not, it's this stuff. So we're not seeing much LSD on the street. The reason I tell you that, that's important to listen to. 
Remember, I supervise the narcotics unit in the largest police department in this county, and I work a lot with all the other agencies in the entire Dallas-Fort Metroplex. LSD is very, very hard to find. I'm not saying LSD is okay to have at all, because I could have a whole other day on it, why that stuff shouldn't be used. What I'm telling you is if someone tells you it's acid or someone tells you it's LSD, I'll bet you my next paycheck it's this stuff. Okay? Remember that. Tell your friends. Um, you can go to the next one, too. It is a synthetic. We can go to the next one. Okay. This stuff is a liquid. It's going to be put on most often some type of blotter paper. It's most often going to be put on some type of paper. Maybe it'll be on some type of candy or some type of other, some type of other device, but they want the liquid to be able to get into your body sublingually. You'll put, people will put this stuff on a variety of things, but uh, it can be absorbed right through your skin too. You can handle this stuff and don't intend to. You could actually suffer the effects of this stuff as well. Remember, this is a research chemical. This was never, this also was never intended for people to actually consume. But these things are often diverted, and this is exactly the same situation we're in here with this stuff. Okay, uh, we can keep going. So Mr. Bryan's gonna talk about a lot of this stuff. I wanna read one more, one more, keep going. One more, there it is, okay. <clears throat> there are websites out there, this is not news to anybody, that you can go on and try to find out whether or not other people have liked this drug or not, right? Whatever the drug may be. Well, this particular one, this is a user review of something that this person believes to be in bomb. First of all, we have no idea who this is that wrote this on the internet. We have no idea what this person actually took, but they're going to put on there that it's in bomb. You have to keep in mind that you can't verify anything on the internet virtually. This person says it's one of the best, if not the best drug ever made. Pure and indescribable bliss. The experience is incredible. The chemical changed me, made me happier, um, et cetera, et cetera. If a person was reading this, heck, this sounds like a commercial for this stuff. Let's go out and try it. But Mr. Brown's going to tell you the other, the reality side of this stuff. And I don't know who this person is, and there's hundreds of these reviews out there like this. This is not the reality of this drug. Um, it's illegal. Can't possess it in Texas, period. I won't go into the specifics, but this stuff is illegal and prosecutable effective March 1st of this year in Texas and across the country. Um, we're not going to talk about it. We can go right past methamphetamine. It's still a problem. Well, I'm going I'm to end with this. Heroin. I should have started with this, but that's not really the reason we're here. There are two forms of heroin that you will see in Texas. Black tar heroin and powdered heroin. Years ago, in the late 90s, we had a heroin epidemic in this area, and the drug that people were using was something they were calling on the street as Chiva, C-H-I-V-A. The way you would do Chiva is you would take black tar heroin, you would take diphenhydramine, Benadryl, Dorman, some other type of over-the-counter sleep aid, mix those things together in the form of a, like a coffee bean grinder, and produce a light brown colored powder. Today, you take, this is what black tar heroin looks like. Today, let me get another one. People will inject that, or they will add black tar heroin to diphenhydramine, producing this, which is cheese. People I've talked to at high schools in Plano say, I've never used heroin. Yeah, I've used cheese, but I've never touched heroin. Heroin, and cheese heroin is exactly, 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 exactly the exact same thing that killed all those people in the late 90s. So do not think that cheese is any different. So... All right, I think I've run out of my time. I appreciate you all's attention, and please pay attention to Mr. Brown. He's got a good message for you. Okay. Our next speaker this morning is Mr. Eric Brown, but as most of the kids at school know him, Montana Brown's dad. He is the father of seven children, five of which have attended Heritage. Since losing Montana, he has taken to trying to raise awareness about the synthetic designer drugs and their dangers. Mr. Brown went to the University of Utah where he earned a BA and a BS and then attended South Texas College of Law for, after serving as an officer in the military in the Marine Corps. He now works for a division of Ford Motor Company in their specialty truck division. He has come here today to talk to you about just one time.
Got some pictures of Montana up here. Uh, I think most of you know him, or you saw him. He, he was quite the character, and I gotta tell you, we, we miss him every day. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Montana's just one time journey. Um, Montana was a freshman here. He started dabbling with drugs in August, right before school started. Uh, he smoked pot for the first time. Uh, he had a spleen injury where he was prescribed some hydrocodone, and he started experimenting with that as well. Uh, he experimented with things like nutmeg, um, Red Devils, Triple C's, you know, the cold tablets, cough syrup. Well, in September, I come home one day, and there's a, a pipe right by um, the sink where Genius has taken the pipe and tried to wash all the resin out of it. So that day, he earned the uh, nickname around our house, uh, Graham the Pipe Cleaner, because he said, Dad, it's only a gram. Where'd you get it? 7-Eleven. My oldest son tells me it's easier to get couple of grams at 7-Eleven than it is to go buy alcohol. Well, so Graham the pipe cleaner got daddy locked down for that. He, uh, he was grounded for a significant amount of time. And uh, in my house, what daddy locked down is, is uh, you get all your privileges taken away. You're not going to have any sleepovers. You're not going to be doing anything uh, outside of school. Uh, everything's with the family. And um, you get community service. So Graham got about 100 hours of community service from Dad. And after uh, seven weeks of lockdown, he uh, had worked his way through 40 of them. At that point, we decided to talk about something called deferred adjudication. Uh, basically, the reason I call it deferred adjudication is that the first time you get caught with drugs in Collin County, your SRO catches you or another officer catches you, uh, you're going to go to court, you're going to be charged, and if you're lucky, you get deferred adjudication, which is you're going to be um, monitored by the court, you're going to take drug tests all the time, and um, the penalty is going to be suspended if you refrain from future behavior like that. So once Montana understood that, we, we came to an agreement that I would give him deferred adjudication. He, he made a contract with me that he wasn't going to do any more of this stuff. Uh, this is right before ha Halloween. So that week, Genius, while riding uh, the bus to school, uh, is talking with an older kid who's like 18 who, who went to Heritage and um, they're talking about hydros. You know, most, most of you begin your, your dalliances into drug use in your mom and dad's medicine cabinet. Um, Montana had some leftover hydros from his, from his spleen injury. And so as this uh, older kid was talking, I'll call him genius too, um, was talking about hydros and how great they were. Montana piped up and said, oh, hey, I've had that. I, I got some still at home. So genius number two keeps asking genius number one to bring him to school for three or four days. And, and finally, Montana decides he'll, he'll hook his friend up and give them to him. So he gives him six of the tablets that he had left over. Well, um, Genius number two decides to pop five of them in his first period class. And uh, while he's out of it, he drops one on the floor. The SRO finds it. You ever see him pick up their phone and scan that thing? They know exactly what it is. He figured out it was hydro. He, he asked uh, Genius number two where he got it. He said, Montana Brown. Well, this is a controlled substance. So Montana earned immediate suspension from school. Um, he was kicked out of Heritage. He had to go to SOC. Uh, the, the deal is you go to SOC for 60 days and you have a chance to clean up your act and then maybe you get to come back. But more than that, it was a felony because school is a drug-free zone. He handed out a controlled substance at school. 
And so he was subsequently arrested. They perp walked him out of SOC. What I mean by that, they handcuffed him in front of all his friends and walked him out of there. And the SRO had let me know that this was going to happen. Um, they took him over to the juvenile detention over in Collin County. They called me to let me know he was there, and if I wished, I could come pick him up. Uh, I chose not to pick him up. I let him spend the night in there. And the next day, you go in front of the juvenile judge. Uh, I talked to the, count, to the uh, probation officer that was going to be overseeing his case and, and the judge, and we decided that uh, if, it would be a good thing for Montana to think about this for another five days. So he spent another five days in, in juvenile, and then um, he got out. And I think it shook him up pretty good because um, by all reports, he, he didn't do any more of the things that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the judge gave him a 30-day house arrest couldn't be on any uh, school campus or he would be arrested. It's basically like daddy lockdown. And um, Montana got through that and he had done all the requirements uh, that he needed to do at SOC to be able to come back uh, after the break here to, um, here to Heritage. Well, uh, at this point, uh, I had to go out of town on work. And uh, Rory, Montana's oldest brother, 20 years old, going to University of Arkansas. Jack, who goes here to Heritage with y'all. And Montana, um, I felt like I could leave him home and things would be okay and Rory would take care of him. Well, when I was leaving town, I told him there was one particular kid I did not want to be in my house while I was gone because I knew he was the hookup man. I knew he was the one that could get, lay his hands on anything. And we didn't need that kind of trouble. So as soon as I walk out the door, um, they call him. And they decide they're going to have a little going away party for Rory going to the University of Arkansas. And they're going to do some mushrooms because uh, they think mushrooms will be cool. We, we have this uh, Viking Nordic heritage, and they watch a show called Vikings on the History Channel. And uh, so they thought it would be cool to try mushrooms like the Vikings did. So all week long, they're looking for mushrooms. You know, they've summoned Hook up over to the house. He's looking through all his druggy contacts for it. And uh, Montana genius decides he's going to walk around all the pastures around here uh, looking in the cow patties. He has pictures of psychedelic mushrooms hoping to find some. Well, he didn't find any. Friday night comes, they haven't found any. Hookup tells him, hey, I can get some acid. I can get some LSD. So they Google this and they see, oh, acid, LSD. Well, nobody ever died of this. It's been around since the 30s. This is safe. Let's, let's do this acid. So the hookup goes and, and meets with uh, someone else along with a, another lady, and he brings 10 hits of acid back to the house. Obviously, it wasn't acid. It was on the blotter paper, just like you saw in the pictures up here. Um, as you know from trip reports, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. They had found that you know when you take acid you want to smoke some weed to enhance your trip. So they do this and um, then they take their first hit of acid. 45 minutes later they take their second hit. My genius son Rory takes three of them. This is not acid. Like the officer was saying, if you think you're doing acid, if you think you're doing LSD, you are not. You are not. And I know some of Montana's friends are still doing this and messing with it. You're taking your life in your hands. You're not getting what you think you're getting. We just had a big incident over in McKinney where at least 20 different kids were affected. We only heard of three in the press, but there were a lot more kids affected than what you know. They were middle schoolers, they were high school, they were college kids, they were kids in comas. They were kids wandering naked on the roads from this drug. You're not getting what you think you're getting. Number one thing I want to tell you, 
is you can't trust your drug dealer. That's why they're called drug dealers, okay? You never know what you're getting. Um, Montana gets caught in a loop. He's taking this drug. What I mean by a loop is for about a half hour, he kept saying and doing the same thing over and over and over. Of course, Jack and Rory and Hookup think uh, that Montana's just trying to freak him out. But Montana's saying and doing the same thing over and over. And then he, he falls on the floor and he goes into convulsions. And um, they call a friend from Applebee's who has a little bit of EMT training. He shows up, he checks on Montana, he thinks things are good, and then Montana goes into convulsions again. And he calls 911 and it took the first responders 11 minutes to get to our house. Montana died around minute eight in, the, in this friend's arms, um, not being able to breathe, twitching. First call I get is um, the police, I think it was the police, it might have been an EMT, I don't know, they're just like, Mr. I'm in California, it's the middle of the night, it's 2 a.m. And they, they call me and they say, Mr. Brown, uh, we're at your house, and I'm thinking, oh great, Montana has taken a bag of crap and lit it on fire on someone's front porch. Which if you know Montana, that's, that sounds plausible, doesn't it? But that's not what happened. Um, they're telling me he's not responding to CPR, He's on his way in an ambulance to Centennial, and Jack and Rory are in trouble also, and they're, they're in an ambulance on their way to Centennial. They tell me they think he took LSD. That's what the boys have told him they, they took. So what do I do? I Google LSD. Oh, thank God, nobody ever died from that unless they jumped in front of a bus or through a window. He'll be okay. You know, Montana, he's healthy, he's an athlete, he'll be all right. Half hour later, I call the ER doctor, and, and Montana's dead. The other two boys are in ICU. And they're so out of it, they didn't know that their brother died for another 36 hours. Um, there's a lot of you here today that really need to hear this. You don't know what your friend is giving you. Your friend doesn't know what he's giving you. There are over 3,000 varieties of synthetic drugs on our streets. These are research chemicals. They're made in disgusting places. You have no idea how your body's gonna react to them. You have no idea how your body's gonna react to too much of a dosage of over-the-counter medicine or something out of your parents' medicine cabinet. Okay, just one time when you tried it and you got lucky and it didn't kill you or maim you for life doesn't mean you should keep doing it. My advice to you is you need to just avoid it. Now, you know, I, I know it's all around you. I know you, you see it daily. And the only way I can make you aware and tell you why you shouldn't do it is to tell you these stories. So you've just heard Montana's story. I'm gonna tell you some stories of some other parents that I know that I've met through this. Um, I belong to different organizations with them trying to raise awareness about synthetic drugs, trying to get legislation um, to change the laws so that these things are completely illegal and not available at all. So I'm gonna tell you some stories and we're just gonna look over some things real quick. Maximus Foundation, this is a, a lady who, who's, her child was one of the first kids to die from this drug. This is Max. This is Max as a, as a baby. Let's go to the next one. Little boy. This is him uh, a week before he died. He was 17. Never had to worry about Max. He was a good kid. Um, let's go to the next one. Max went over to the Westfield Mall just outside of Chicago. He went to buy some hookah, some cherry-flavored hookah. Well, the gal behind the counter said, hey, we've got this new legal stuff, it's cherry-flavored. How about you try that instead? So him and his girlfriend buy it. He goes home, he smokes it, synthetic cannabinoid, fake pot, whatever you want to call it, 
And um, girlfriend goes home, and he's starting to freak out. So he calls his older brother, and he says, hey, I just smoked some of that legal stuff. I, and I'm not feeling good. We'll take a hot shower and lay down. Well, Max didn't take a hot shower and lie down. The next thing that happens is his mom's getting phone calls saying Max is going 100 miles an hour through the neighborhood. Max is a good kid. Max not, that's not Max. Max is going 100 miles through the neighborhood in, until that house got in the way when the road ended. And he went through that house. Let's go to the next one. Max died from the injuries he sustained in that crash about eight hours later, and his parents were just baffled. It was four days later before they learned that uh, he had smoked this legal weed. And so she started this foundation. Let's go to the next one. What is synthetic marijuana? I mean, these names are old. I mean, recently there was an outbreak in Texas where over 300 people between Austin, Lubbock, and and, and here in Dallas were hospitalized for overdo overdose to this stuff. Um, let's go to the next one. What does it look like? Well, I know some of you geniuses can say, oh, that's not pot. But you know, if you're not a genius, you might think it is. In fact, one of the things that I've learned about is um, your trusted hookup will sometimes bring you a cheaper weed, um, not a hydroponic weed, and it smells and tastes like weed, and maybe they've added a little bit of synthetic to it, some synthetic chemical to it. So they're telling you you're getting a premium weed, but it's the cheap stuff, and it's got some synthetic added to it. Uh, I had a lady tell me that uh, she bought some from a friend and uh, tasted like weed, smelled like weed, until a week later when she woke up in the ICU. Let's go to the next one. Here's all the different crazy names. You guys know what Kush Pops are. Don't take a sucker from any of your friends, especially if it's got a synthetic in it. Um, synthetic cannabinoids. Basically, scientists figured out that there was this chemical called THC in marijuana, and then they started trying to replicate its effects in the laboratory. Basically, THC, the active ingredient in pot, the psychoactive ingredient in pot atta uh, attaches to what they call your CB1 and your CB2 receptor. So let's think of pot as a little yellow sticky note. And that little yellow sticky note sticks to your brain. That's the effects of pot. The synthetic cannabinoid is 500 times stronger. Okay, Think of it, it's like duct tape sticking to your brain. Now I have another story of another young man, 14 years old, high school football player, Saturday morning. This kid had never done anything in his life. Some goofy ex-con gave him what he called a, a taste of this legal weed so he could beat the drug tests at school. Um, mom and dad go to the mall. He pulls it out. Well, I don't know what happened in his world, but or what was chasing him or he, what he thought was wrong, but he put a gun to his head and shot himself. He didn't die. Mom and dad found him. He's life flighted out. He lives another eight hours before he dies. Mom and dad have no clue what has gotten into this kid until two weeks later when they get in his room and they find this synthetic cannabinoid. Um, this stuff is always changing. There are thousands of varieties for it. You know, a lot of you are tempted to mess with it because it's a way to get around drug tests or uh, it's, it's a crazy intense high. You have no idea what you're getting and you have no idea what it's going to do to your body. Let's go to the next one. This was one called Crazy Clown. Well, people have been smoking Crazy Clown in Colorado for quite some time. It had a pretty popular following. And for whatever reason, um, the synthetic cannabinoid chemical that they had been using, they changed it. They went from probably like a JWH-18 to something called AB Panaka. Well, the first week the AB Panaka was in the smoke shops, um, 250 were hospitalized and seven people died from it. Okay, We've, there, there are cases like this all over the United States. They changed the, the chemical formulas 
to get around the law because the, the legislature will say, oh, we're not, we're not going to have any more JWH-18. So they'll come up with AB Panaka instead. And these are research chemicals. They're, they are, you have no idea how it's going to affect you. Let's go to the next one. Bath salts, he talked about that. You know, the, the biggest thing, if we could go back to that for a second. <laughs> you know, the biggest thing I would tell you, it, because it is such a drug that you're going to see everywhere and in college, is molly. Okay? Molly is supposed to be MDMA or ecstasy. Okay? A drug since it's, it's been around since the 30s. What it does to you is it releases all the serotonin in your brain. Serotonin is is uh, what makes you feel good, okay? It's a naturally occurring substance in your body. It makes you feel good. MDMA releases that. Now, here's the thing. Once it's been released in your body, it's going to take your body months to replenish it. And your body's going to quit producing things you need, like testosterone, human growth hormone, okay? It's going to overproduce estrogen, and guys, that's not going to have a good effect on you, okay? It's, so what, what the dealers have come up with, the, the DEA did a sampling of 100 different molly capsules from around the United States. They found that only 13% of them contained any MDMA at all. The majority of them, and even the ones that had MDMA in them, had synthetic cathinone. The synthetic cathinone will give you a similar type feeling. But the problem is, it's a research chemical. You never know what variety of it you're getting. You never know how it's going to affect your individual body. Uh, I heard of a girl who was an honor student. She was a Rhodes Scholar. She was going to the University of Virginia. She went to a rave. The first time she tried a molly capsule, she was dead. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, other synthetic uh, compounds, well, we talked about 25i. That is what Montana took. Montana, lots of people have died from this drug, but you don't know the true number because no tests existed to tell you the true number. This is a chemical that's me measured in micrograms, okay? Um, 750 micrograms is probably the max that anyone could tolerate. And once again, you don't know how it's going to affect you. And there are so many different versions of it. Smiles, 25i, 25e, 2ce. You don't know what you're getting. So <clears throat> this, this research chemical was engineered to have a similar effect to LSD. Once again, it's more potent. You take a single microgram of 25i, or an equivalent, to LSD, it's 17 times stronger per microgram. So what happens is when you've got that blotter paper, the drug dealer who's bought the chemical from China and has mixed it with an acetone or an alcohol, he takes a dropper and he's dropping it on those little individual squares or onto the candy or whatever he's going to give it to you in. The problem is, how do you know you're getting 750 milligrams? Okay, you got some druggie with his dropper dropping that on that piece of paper. What happens if you get two drops instead of one? Now you're looking at 1,500 micrograms versus 750. Okay, Montana probably got what was called a hot spot. One of the pieces of paper that he got, the blotter paper, probably had an extra dosage on there. Rory's lucky to be alive taking three of them. Um, once again, there is no acid or LSD out there. This is what you're getting. They were barely able to identify this chemical starting in 2012. It had been on the streets since 2009. Montana was the 19th confirmed death from this. There are a lot more than that. He's probably the only kid in Texas and one of the few in the United States that has a death certificate that says 25 IM bomb. And I'm going to go ahead and spare you the details of what goes into an autopsy and a toxicology report and what your parents get, what condition your parents get the body back in when, um, when, you, when you finally get to come home, so to speak. Um, you know, there, there's all these new synthetics that are appearing out there. You can't trust these people. 
Okay? The person who sold this to my son, the reason Vic Ruth, who was supposed to be the other speaker here today, he's a DEA agent, DEA agent for 30 years. The Frisco police called him within the first hour. They apprehended the guy that sold these things to Montana, or to Montana's friend hookup within 72 hours. This, this guy was 25 years old, foreign national from China, uh, here on a passport, or here on a, a student visa to go to school. He had a paid for house and had brought all his family over. He didn't, he didn't care. He had told him it was acid. For $10 a square, I would have gladly paid him $100 just to stay away from my house that night. Let's go to the next one. It's Russian roulette. You don't know what you're getting. You don't know how it's going to affect you just as you don't know how over-the-counter medicines are going to affect you. I'm allergic to opiates. If I took a bunch of hydro, I'd be dead. You, know, you don't know how that over-the-counter medicine is going to affect you. You don't know how that stuff out of your mom and dad's medicine cabinet are going to affect you. You have no idea what your drug dealer is really giving you. These are poisons. Let's go to the next one. You're the lab rats. Uh, they mislabel it. There's no branding. I mean, one could be called Diablo. The other one could be called Crazy Clown. You don't know the difference. It might be the same crap in every one of them, just like he said. Side effects. Let me tell you a couple of stories. Um, one of the people I know was a law student. Law student comes home from the weekend, thinks he's going to chill. He gets some of this legal weed. And next thing you know, He's turning on the stove, electric burners, and he's putting his hands on these electric burners. And he leaves his, hand, his hands on these electric burners until the first responders respond to the, the fire alarm going off in his apartment. They come in, it's all smoky, they find him standing there. His hands are completely charred. The only way they can get him off of there is to cut his hands off. Okay, but he was so out of it, he continued running around the apartment and they had to tase him. And I, I told it took 13 tases to get him down. Okay. Another girl, first time she tried one of these synthetics, she was out with some friends in Kentucky, and uh, she went into temporary paralysis. Her eyes were wide open, not blinking. They could not tell that she was breathing. It was wintertime. She had a coat on. And she can hear her friends talking about how they're going to chuck her into the river so that they don't get in trouble. Well, thankfully for her, she woke up. Um, <clears throat> I have a friend in Australia her son was ordering things over the internet, and it was um, Silk Road. I know you know what that is. Um, there are now over 40 what we call darknet sites that hide your IP address, hide their IP address, so they can send you stuff in the mail. Um, he ordered cocaine. He had done it a couple of times. He didn't get cocaine this time. What he got was heroin. He snorted it like cocaine, and he died. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate Dr. Mims for having me here. Uh, I know it takes a, an act of uh, Congress to, to set up something like this, and, and I really appreciate all, all the hoops that your administration and your, your school district jumped through to, to have us here. And I, we have a great district, and we've got great people who care about you and want nothing more than your success and safety as I do for you. And I, I'm here talking to you today because I know Montana, he would want you to know and to make a better choice than he did, that you can have a good life. We're here a short time. Our life is but a vapor. We're here to gain knowledge and experience. If we're messing around with drugs and numbing our mind and take, destroying our ambition, you're not going to accomplish the things that you're meant to do in this life. So, instead of worrying about the next party and find the best hookup, let's focus on living instead of trying to, to kill ourselves. Thank you for your time. This is Montana's brother, Jack, and his sister, Olivia, and they have something they want to say to you.
Montana's life was not worth this drug. He had so much to live for and so much to grow up and be. He was well liked by everyone, having the ability to make everyone laugh and get together. He has so much potential to grow up and be someone, and it makes me so sad to know he will not be here and not be able to do that anymore. It's a shame he did not, he did die because of a first time experimentation. People need to understand how dangerous drugs like these can affect you and how the people around you, just the first time can take your life. It is not worth the lives of you or one of your friends. I hope we all learn a lesson from Montana as it is not, it is, as it is the only, one of the only ways we can honor and keep his memory alive. I want Montana's life to mean something to people in the future as there are not many ways he will be remembered. My life has completely changed without Montana. I notice at school with his friends and at home when I don't have him there to talk to or hang out with. We have grown up our whole lives with each other and it's really sad to know he's not around anymore. We need to keep his story in all of our minds when confronted with situations where drugs are involved to keep our lives and our friends' lives safe. Okay, um, you know, it's really sad and disappointing how much people, like, really don't know about drugs and still do them. Um, I really want you guys to know that this is something people really shouldn't mess with, and um, everyone in the audience has such a bright future in front of them, and I don't want to just, I don't want you guys to just throw that away. Some people think, well, you know, if I just try it once, nothing's going to happen, no big deal, right? But that's what Montana thought. And um, Montana thought he was invincible, and many of us actually thought he was. Um, but I really loved this kid. Um, not only was he my brother, but he was someone that I knew that was like no one else. Everyone who knew him can probably agree that he truly was like no one else. And he had his own personality, his own character that made him a Montana. Um, he had so much potential and to truly become something amazing and it's so sad to see that that's all gone. Um, and you know, that's, that's how you guys are. And, um, all of you guys have their own character and your own dreams that you're working so hard to overcome and achieve. So why would you just throw that all away with one, one experiment? Um, don't get involved with drugs because it only takes one time. It was only one time for Montana and suddenly everything was taken away from him. His friends, his dreams, his life. And I don't want you, and I don't want this to happen to you guys or to anyone in the audience. So, pe so please really listen and understand that it only takes one time. One time and you can lose everything you really have. So is it really worth it? Students are really running short on time right now, so we're gonna conclude this, but I wanna ask one thing. It's incredibly difficult to get up here and talk about somebody that you love, that you lost, to drugs. The question I have for you is, is it going to make a difference in your life? And only you can decide that because it's a personal choice that you make every single day, whether you get involved in it or not. It's a personal choice in whether you uh, put yourself in a situation where you can obtain drugs it is your choice. And that's what we want you to understand from today. It's about making right choices in life. You're either going towards success or you're going towards failure. Which direction do you want to go? For those of you that are, uh, might be hurting still from this because you were so close to Montana or you're trying to understand why someone, a friend of yours would be taken away. We have counselors in G118 and 119 today that are here to talk with you. And you certainly, all you have to do is ask your teacher and they will let you go down there and talk to the counselor. We know that this is a tough thing to hear. We understand that. 
Parents, if you'd like to stick around afterwards, we'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have because we want you to understand what's out there. Um, personally, I'd like to thank everybody for their attendance today. As we dismiss, you'll be going back to first period. Thank you.